Hello! I hope everyone's safe and is enjoying their lockdown wherever you are in the world and never has this t-shirt been quite so apt. Anyway, we've got another release of my quad sim today so I thought I'd just go through what it's bringing and what I've done since last time. So if you remember from last time what I had was planes not quite being implemented but I had um, Nathan or drones and whatnot actually created that plane for me. He came back just after the last release and had created a wind turbine for me. So I've added a small wind farm of three turbines into the sim so now you can dive them, fly around them, go through them, whatever, trying to get hit by the blaze else you'll know about it and uh, that's in the game and I think it just makes the landscape look a little bit more interesting so that's good stuff. People have also asked for things like bandos, bridges, um, general buildings and stuff so Nathan um, is hopefully taking some of this on right as we speak. We've got a plan for some sort of sort of part built place so we're talking like perhaps construction stuff, um, open faced uh, sort of houses or buildings to go through that sort of thing so fingers crossed um, we can get that in the game. It's really quite useful to be able to work with someone who's doing this at the time because although I could get a load of um, pre-done assets and sort of buy them in or, or there's certain free ones I have to do a whole bunch of things in the Unity game engine to define where things are although there's like a mesh and you can basically say if you hit this in time mesh it's a collision when you're dealing with things where you can go inside and outside you have to basically define all this manually and the more complicated the model is the more difficult it is for me to manipulate the thing in in 3d space and basically draw these collision maps over the top using these very sort of primitive shapes like sort of squares and rectangles um, so we've been talking about um, for example like in a multi-story car park sort of thing if he can do a section of it and I can put my colliders in there and then we can use that as a building block to build on stuff so basically passing me small little bits of the models over that I can do stuff with and then use this building blocks to come up with the rest of it is uh, really handy so it's really nice to work with someone there. So a few minor fixes went in this one as well. Um, the only significant one you might see is the fact it's now got a volume slider. Somebody mentioned to me they like to listen to music while playing this and I've only got a sort of sound for sound on sound off but he wanted to hear the drone sound but he didn't want to hear it that loudly so basically I've just created a little mixer so you can slide it down and thus your music will be as a volume and you can alter the the drone noise as it were for you. Um, it's one of the things I sort of had in my brain to oh I must do that at some point anyway but I didn't really see any urgency in it but when somebody said oh, I'm doing this I thought well oh, I'll just stick that in so that's in there. So the big thing I wanted to do with this release is the rewrite of the plane. As you saw from last month, I had a plane kind of flying in there, but I wasn't happy with it. I wanted to go back and redo it all from scratch using all my own sort of code um, and sort of figure out how this would work and how I could implement it. I will admit that there was a little bit of procrastination here because it looked hard. And so I went off and I wrote a, a little Asteroids game um, for a day. And then just for fun I made this into uh, an LDO game so I, I got my colleagues from LDO their faces and some vocal samples from there and so we ended up with a really weird little asteroids game that uh, you can shoot me and a bunch of my friends and we say things to you. Quick plug LDO let's drone out it's a drone based podcast well kind of and we're live on YouTube at 8 p.m UK time every Thursday check it out and if you want to get the game uh, there's a link down below. The the only difference is, uh, apart from Linux, Mac and Windows, there's an uh, Android uh, version as well if you want to play that. Anyway, back to the planes. The planes were complicated. I, I sort of imagined I could look and there'd be a nice little formula and it's like, this is flight. When I looked at the amount of maths that went on with defining how flight worked, it scared me because I'm not a, a maths whiz and there were symbols in there I didn't even understand what they meant. So what I did is decided to think about it myself and I created a little sort of thing about how I would fly based on five pieces of paper. And it's pretty simple stuff. It was mostly about speed versus the attitude of the plane. For example, if I was to throw this straight, then it would go for a while, but then it would lose speed. And as it lost speed, it would drop the nose. But as it dropped the nose, it might recover speed. Similarly, if it went upwards, that would mean it would lose speed if it was chucked at a constant rate and as it went a certain amount it would stall the nose would come down again and finally on the roll as we went like this 
we'd slip this way, we'd lose some height, depending on the amount of roll we're putting in, we'd lose more height and slip less. Really basic things really, but I, I imagined that with some experimentation I could model those reasonably well. I, and I, I fly planes so I sort of know what to expect um, when I watch things. There were plenty of issues along the way. I had a plane that only wanted to fly upside down for example, and then I found out I did the scaling factor wrong when I was putting in um, aileron. I forgot to put the magnitude down to a maximum of one, so we had some really interesting uh, attempts at <laughs> flying using crazy ailerons. I actually took a whole day just to sit down and try and learn vector maths because I didn't really understand how I could get from my flight path to another position and how I'd calculate the angles involved and the trajectory in order to do that. Uh, this wasn't easy because as I said I'm not a maths person and my brain's a bit old so it doesn't like taking on new information but you know we got there in the end for a lot of trial and error and basically looking at stuff and deciding did it look right did it feel right we sort of got there in the end. So let me jump in the sim now and I'll show you how it works. So here we are in the sim and I've got my control uh, connected up as usual and we can just you know fly around as Panol there nothing much going on those are the uh, the new uh, turbines I talked about earlier. So this is accessible from the scenarios page which is you press space and this is where you'd launch the cars and the cars are still there um, all the normal circuits there. The difference is now we've got this button so it says chase mode if you sort of hover over there you'll see it highlights and if you click on it it'll go between plane and cars. So with planes we've only got the one plane we've got three speeds and we've got this thing called plane trails. I'll show you what that is if I just go to the, the basic circuit and I launch that. Launching will put you on the ground just behind the plane as it takes off. So if we do that now, um, we'll see the plane take off, toddle off on its way. Um, and if we use plane trails and do the same thing, you'll see we've got this little virtual sort of streamer um, going off it. It's a virtual streamer, you can't touch it and cut or anything. Um, but this is just, if, it, if you're finding it hard to keep up with them or hard to see, then this is going to help you. You can see it's miles away on the screen now and we can still see a quite reasonable sort of red slash there. But I'll, I'll turn it off quickly and I'll show you what it's like um, spotting and I would use pretty much the same sort of method uh, for spotting a plane as I would it in real life. So if we if we launch here, uh, this is the, the plane is in slow and this is the basic circuit. The basic circuit is sort of designed for your beginner thing. It literally just does a little oval and one of the things it does, it keeps the plane fairly level in altitude so it's not gonna go up and down too much it's gonna gonna pretty much stay um, the same sort of altitude so you won't have to sort of chase it up and down if you can get your altitude get yourself behind a plane you'll you'll pretty much keep that I mean as it goes into its uh, turns using its uh, ailerons and banks it's obviously going to lose some height there which it won't recover straight away but you know you get the idea so you, yeah you can get up nice and close to this and just follow it along but what if you lose it? So if I lost it here, um, obviously it's not too far away, but I would use the normal sort of thing. I would go up high and look down, just as I would in real life. And you can see that the white of the plane um, just shows up really quite well, certainly against the desert and uh, the greenery of the grass here. Not a problem to see. And if I was to stick the plane trails on, I'll keep these on now. And let's just boost this up to medium so we can see. Launch that. And I'll, I'll zip up high again just so we can have a look down. You'll see that you know we've got quite a good visual of the plane even from a distance where it's going. We can't really see the plane that well now but we can certainly see that that red stripe after it. So uh, yeah that's something to use if um, if you're a bit new to this or you're having trouble keeping sight of the plane uh, and stuff like that. And we can easily catch up on it. So the the speed thing is interesting. This is this is medium speed, and I'm flying. I think I'm flying. And what am I flying? Let's have a look. I'm flying medium quad power in expert mode at the moment, and uh, we can you can see throttle wise, I'm at about fifty percent. Um, so this actually does scale quite well to the the flight assist settings in terms of power. So medium power is going to be fine for the uh, medium speed plane you can happily follow the slow plane on the low power and you will need full power to 
go with the the fast quad it's it's pretty damn fast actually maybe too fast personally I, I'm liking just following the slow plane and maybe the medium a lot more than fast I put fast in there just in case you sort of wanted to get out and really chase those fast wings along but um, yeah I, I'm preferring sort of slow mode uh, in general the the other courses you'll see we've got the figure eight here that goes through the city and stuff the thing I spent most time on is certainly the Grand Tour so I just wanted to give you a couple of highlights there because I was I was quite pleased with what I'd managed to do with it. So let me show you Grand Tour. I'm going to do it on slow because it, it sort of lets you take in the sights a bit better. The idea with this one, you can see it's, it's all squiggly, it goes all around the map. Uh, the idea being I'm trying to go through some of the sights, some of the map uh, as much as possible and, and show you what's there. So let's let's launch this one and let's chase the plane along and I'll show you what we get. So we start off going you know quite low level which I thought was a lot of fun. And I wanted to try and make it sort of proximity. So we get up and we get through the city. We make some very dangerous turns, which you wouldn't do in real life, of course. Uh, and of course, at this point, you can, you know, get the angles you like. You can, you can follow the plane from up above. You can get round below it. You can practice, you know, seeing it in all sorts of different ways. The, the idea is to to try and make this the way you want to follow a plane. Uh, and then you can go through the woods, which is good fun. I, I like to think if I was flying a plane, this is a route I would take as well. And then we're gonna go up, find our way through the wind turbines, and then we do a bunch of flying around the mountain. So yeah, aside from the fact I wanted to take you through places and sort of use proximity. I also wanted to play a lot with the altitude. So in this we, we go up, we go down, we go all over the place. So uh, I figured it was a, a more fun route to travel, try and keep the plane in view or, you know, do, do the things you want to. If you want to try and get that sort of side view in, then do so. Whoops. Perhaps you wanted to sort of follow it as it gets proximity to the mountain. All good, finally interesting angles. If you do hit it, by the way, you will know about it. Um, technically, you you could knock the plane down out of the sky, but what I found is you'd generally come off much worse as the smaller quad. The idea of this plane is it's supposed to be, oops, <laughs> it's supposed to be a model, it's not a, a full-size plane. Uh, that's the scale of it. Uh, and, and the idea is, yeah, if you get used to doing this, perhaps you can go out with your friends and try it in real life, and you see we're getting some interesting proximity there but enough about me flying it that go out and do it yourself another thing i should quickly point out is that i found the gravity was incorrect once again so i've put it back to what it should be as sort of the default and if you use line of sight you will see that yeah it feels about right but you know i'll be the first to admit that i've found it myself feeling a little bit floaty when i've been using it in fpv mode so once again you know it's up to you how you fly if you want to zap it zap it up it's fine and what i've done now where i had the problem before with the cars feeling a bit light when i change the gravity i've made those independent and the plane as well so you should be able to mess with your gravity as much as you like um set it up just how you like it just what feels right and it won't affect anything else in the game so it's sort of independent um so everything else in the world is doing normal gravity and that feels right so it's absolutely fine for you to whack up the gravity on the quad because it only affects the quad so I'm putting this in for a couple of reasons. I mean, one, it's good fun. I, I do enjoy flying behind a plane and sort of chasing it around when I've got a quad so you can sort of practice in real life if you were. The other reason is all these things, be it like the quad chasing, the car chasing, the beach ball, etc. It's all misdirection. I'm trying to get the beginner to not think about the fact that they're having to do things with their thumbs or pinches or whatever. Um, I want them to concentrate on something other than thinking about what they're flying. So the idea of all these things is it takes your mind off it. You're concentrating on hitting a beach ball or you're concentrating on trying to keep that plane in view. Your muscle memory is being built up every time you mess with it. So the more fun I can make it to mess around with, the more that muscle memory builds up without you having to think about it and the, the better you'll get at it. That's what's kind of behind all these ideas as well as being, you know, fun to do. So that is the release, uh, it's the 045 Alpha release, you can get it, there's links down below, there's links to the wiki, the GitHub site, etc, etc. Don't forget to expand the description and you'll find out where to get it from. Next up, well, I'm probably thinking about moving the uh, 
status from the alpha release to the beta release uh, because it's kind of I think we've got the main sort of engine moving correctly uh, nobody's told me about uh, a controller problem for like ages now which is like hooray everything seems to work and I haven't done anything majorly different in the flying controls I think they're all fairly sound so I'm just putting more bits in as I go to do that we're probably gonna need some sort of title page and I might dump by default into the main menu rather than just the sim although I have an option to say start me in the sim rather than the menu but I'm figuring for people that haven't tried it before and, and come onto this they're like oh I'm just sat here in a quad what's going on some, some people like a main menu to do that we'll have to have a title which has always been tricky because I haven't really had a, a proper title for this I've just called it curry kitten quad sim now given that the plane you're seeing fly around is basically how the AI works is it's got a pretend radio and so what all I'm doing with the AI is I'm giving it controls as per I would in a radio so at some point you will be able to fly the plane the reason it's not in there now is because I have to restructure a load of the code to put it around also the ground handling is not quite there I need to do some more stuff with it but it flies around absolutely fine I was I was pretty happy with it so at, at some point it's not just gonna be a quad sim it's just gonna be an FPV sim in, and you can do line of sight as well because I know people were keen on the line of sight quad so the, the, the summary of all that is I don't know what it's going to be called yet I'll have to come up with a name after that point and, and jumping ahead a bit I might miss a couple of steps out and look at the network inside of you because we're all stuck inside at the moment or at least most of us are um, and with not much to do I thought it'd be good fun to get other people flying along uh, with me or together or whatever I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do or how I'm going to do it yet but I thought that's the next good thing to um, think about and again every time I come up and I, I mess around with something new I come up with another idea and currently it's another gamification idea was be one player is the plane a bunch of players are the quads how long can the plane survive if the quads keep hitting it and try and bash it into the ground just another sort of idea anyway that's it links down below as I said um, if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you don't thumbs down you can uh, comment down below like, uh, subscribe and click on the little bell icon if you can find it because it keeps moving. I'll be back with uh, other stuff and some more of this soon, I hope. And uh, in the meantime, stay safe. I'll see you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.